there you go again. They've won twice as many as they've lost. They're already over their win prop. They go over their win prop every single year. Death, taxes, and the Titans over. They win 20 to 17. They looked absolutely cooked at halftime. It was 10 nothing. It could have been 21 nothing. But I don't know what they're having or saying or what's in the orange slices at halftime that mom's cutting up and giving to those guys. But whatever it is, bottle it, can it, sell it. The Titans come out in the second half. They roar, they win, they get it done. All right, let's bring in our two-time Super Bowl champion, Brian McFadden. It's always both, but you got to pick one. Is this <laughs> yes, more the Titans won it or San Francisco lost it? Oh, you hit me with this question every week, and it's always a tough one. Wow. You know what? Anytime you have costly red zone mistakes that take points away from you, Anytime you dominate a half a play and just have a total letdown the second half, I kind of think you lost the ball game, EK. So I'm aside with the San Francisco 49ers losing the ball game. I mean, they should have went into half up 14 points. And then you come out again, some costly mistakes, some costly decisions that led to an onslaught of points in the second half by the Tennessee Titans. Remember, Tennessee, they were undermanned, especially on the offensive end. They basically had one wide receiver who was open, and he threw the football, Ryan Tannehill, to that guy and A.J. Brown. One man beat the San Francisco 49ers in the, in the air for Tennessee. So me personally, E.K., I think the 49ers let this one slip away more so than Tennessee win, winning the ball game. Now, Tennessee played good football. I don't want to take any credit away from them. But I think the 49ers let this one go. No, it's always in, in some cases it's both, and it is both. I just want to know what it was more. You're not saying that's all it was. You were saying it was even more San Francisco's going to be kicking themselves. Um, yeah. All right, Tennessee looked absolutely just dreadful in the first half. How, how, you played in this league. How can it happen where you just walk into the locker room? It was like a different team came out. It was like 53 different guys came out. What happens at halftime, and how does this happen in the league? Well, you know, getting turnovers, especially when you're at home, really helps the offense. And the defense came and provided a spark by creating that interception in the second half. But remember during the halftime show, one thing that I said I, I would love to, send Tennessee, to see Tennessee do was to speed up the tempo a little bit. And remember, they started to do that in the second half. It, they kind of caught San Francisco on their heels. And then also another adjustment that I emphasize, taking shots on the football field. Remember, the Achilles heel for San Francisco the entire season on the defensive end has been the secondaries. The secondary, primarily speaking, the guys at the edges at the cornerback position. Take shots down the football field. We know Josh Norman, he's there, but he's not the same Josh Norman that we saw in years past. He's starting a rookie opposite of him. He played pretty good football in the first half, but then eventually it became a little too much for him, and Tennessee just started taking shots down the football field to their best pass catcher, and the up-tempo attack definitely put them in a better position than what we saw in the first half. Um, Tennessee has been, as we've talked about it, a team that's always overachieved. They're, you know, they're plucky, right? They're, you know, they're gritty. Nobody calls the best team in football gritty. They call the team that overachieves that's an in-the-way team gritty. You've used and coined that term in-the-way team. Now, A.J. Brown is a star. You saw it. He had more than 50% of the targets. He had half the completions. They may get Derrick Henry back, but they still got a bad offensive line and a, let's face it, average defense, especially against the pass. Is Tennessee any more than an in-the-way team meaning good enough to be in the playoffs, not good enough to go to the Super Bowl. I tell you this much. If they get the Derrick Henry back that we saw before the injury. He's going to be fresh. And if A.J. Brown, and if AJ Brown can stay healthy, that's the issue with A.J. Brown. It's not about what he does when he's in the lineup. It's about will he be in the lineup. If he's healthy and Derrick Henry is healthy, I understand the concerns on the offensive line, but those two players make the offensive line look better. We just saw that from one guy with, with AJ being in the lineup. If those two guys are healthy, EK, I may remove that label from the Tennessee Titans as being an in-the-way team to a legit team, to a legit contender. All right, Tennessee is going to win the division. They have the tie break. They're, you know, this was a huge win. They have Miami at home and at Houston. 
essentially if they win one or the other, they're going to win the division. So that's going to pretty much do that. Can I convince you that this is not that battle loss for San Francisco? And here's why. They're not winning the division. They're not even going to be the four wild card, you know, first wild card. They're going to be that six or seven seed. That's where they were coming in. That's where they're going to be. They are eight and seven. You have Minnesota, New Orleans, and Philly. Minnesota doesn't have Dalvin Cook, and they got a brutal schedule. New Orleans doesn't have a quarterback. They're playing Ian Book on Monday night. And Philly, I don't know if you really believe in Philly, and they're banged up in spots. So San Francisco, who plays Houston next week, you beat Houston next week, you're going to be a wild card team. So this loss, while it may not have been fun, really in the big scheme of things is not an issue for the 49ers. Can I convince you to sign for that? Yeah, I'm right there with you. Look at the schedule. I mean, look at the playoff picture currently. It's safe to say the Rams will be in the playoffs. Even if they lose this yeah, week to the Minnesota right. Vikings, they're in. Now, the issue for San Francisco, you can make this thing very, very interesting down the way because if the Minnesota Vikings beat the Rams, they're right there with the 49ers. The same can be said for the Eagles and the Saints winning. But I still like their chances in getting into the playoffs. They're that one team that's looking for that six or seven spot that could afford to lose and still get in. Can't really say the same for the Vikings or for the Eagles and the Saints. So they're still in, in a good position. They just got to control their own destiny. The loss tonight only made things a little more spicier for the San Francisco 49ers, but I still like their chances to get into the playoffs more so than the other teams that you mentioned. They're going to have 10 days off before they play Houston at home. You don't yeah. be Houston at home, you don't deserve to be in the playoffs. If they beat Houston at home, they're going to the playoffs. So coming no into question. tonight, they had no chance to be anything but a wild card. They lose they're still going to be a wild card. They're not going to miss the playoffs. They're going to be a wild card team, and that's just the way that goes. So in the scheme of things, it may have been frustrating, but I don't know how big of a deal it was that San Francisco lost. I think it's more of a deal that Tennessee won because they just really yeah. locked down that division now, and they are going to be division champs, and they have served notice that A.J. Brown, obviously he can be terrific, and Derrick Henry may be around the corner. Excellent job, B-Mac is always breaking it down. He told us at halftime, the offensive line is bad. They're throwing short passes. That's why they have 10 completions and 40 yards. They got to make an adjustment. They did, and Tennessee won. You want more B-Mac, you get more. It's B-Mac, it's Patrick Peterson of the Vikings. Hey, have a podcast with us. You download, you follow, you enjoy. All right, Jamie Eisenberg, when he tells you and says, I have a philosophy... Consider it like Aristotle, right? Plato, Socrates, Socrates, if you're a Bill and Ted's fan. It doesn't matter. He hits it. He says if you get plus money, because basically they put up every quarterback as a half an interception. If you get plus money, take it blindly. You get a win. You get a win. You get a win. You get a win. That's called four in a row. And oh, by the way, as much as I like pumping up our guy Jamie because I believe and he's terrific, you know I like pumping up our guy Pete Prisco. The only person I saw anywhere who said, you're not going to need the points. Tennessee will win the football game. It's my best play. It's my all on the line. Book it. Stamp it. Tell your mom. Tell your friends. Tell your brother. Tennessee is going to win the football game. Pete Prisco called it. Very, very, very well done. Pete, what the heck happened in the second half after that putrid first half by your Titans tonight. Well, you know, it's interesting. You can always go back and look and see one play decided a game. I mean, if Janoris Jenkins doesn't pick off Jimmy Garoppolo in the end zone, I, I think that game gets away from them and they have no chance. And, and that one play kind of turned it around in terms of the defense. And then offensively in the second half, they, they changed the way they played. I mean, they got much more physical. They got the ball out of Tannehill's hands and they got the ball to A.J. Brown. I mean, he was a beast. Uh, in the second half. So add that all up, and it's a tough team. We say it all the time. Uh, you know, me and Jamie always talk about this, that the Titans are mentally tough, they're physically tough, and they've taken on the characteristics of their head coach, Mike Vrabel, and they showed that in the second half tonight. I always say with the Titans, they are that friend of yours that sort of does better than you ever expected as you were growing up. You're like, he's got a better job than I expected. He outkicked the coverage with the misses. His car's a little too sporty for that wardrobe, and somehow... It's happening. All they do is overachieve. Um, Jamie, when you look at the Titans and A.J. I mean, you have A.J. Brown. You're going to play him now, right? I mean, he's got to be a must play. I know we're getting towards the end of the year, and it's going to be the one final sort of fantasy question. Did you learn anything tonight other than A.J. Brown is back? 
Well, I learned, first of all, you want to talk about overachievers and winners. Let's give our boy Rob Arciero some credit for getting Pete Prisco to wake up at night and come on the air with us to talk about this game. So kudos Thank to you, God. Rob. Uh, I think you look at, uh, at A.J. Brown. Unfortunately, there's probably a lot of people who missed the fantasy playoffs because he wasn't there for them. But if you have him, and I have him in a couple of leagues, uh, I'm, I, can I curse? Can I curse? Yeah. AJ I mean, Bleepin' Brown? How about AJ that? Bleepin' Brown? Let's okay, just, bleepin' is, We take bleeping. There you go. Good enough. Uh, just an awesome, awesome performance. Uh, you know, uh, you want to talk about the second half, what happened? They woke him up. And, you know, it was fun to watch. 16 targets. Let's keep that guy going. It was fun to go back and forth between him and Debo Samuel. So, uh, but in terms of AJ Brown moving forward, yes, absolutely must start guy like we thought coming into the season. Um, Pete, is Tennessee at the end of the day any more than a fun plucky in the way team where good enough to be in the playoffs not good enough to go to the Super Bowl that's pretty much what they've been for five years right last year they won the division you didn't think they're going to the Super Bowl year before they end Tom Brady's reign in New England on his field didn't go to the Super Bowl three straight nine and sevens before that didn't go to the Super Bowl is it any different this year you know, sometimes those teams, though, get hot in the playoffs. And, and we saw it a couple years ago. They went to Kansas City and got whacked. But sometimes they get hot just enough and the ball bounces the right way and they end up in the Super Bowl. I, I don't think this team's going to do that. One of the things that stood out tonight that really bothered me about the Titans, you know, we can focus on the offense, but where the heck was the pass rush? For most of that game, there was none. And you talk about a 49ers line. Yeah, Trent Williams is really good at left tackle, but the rest of that group is average at best, and they did not get enough pressure on Jimmy Garoppolo. He stood back there and did what he wanted to. So that's a concern going forward. I think if they get Henry back, the offense will be fine. They need to get their offensive linemen back. Remember, they played without their starting left side of their offensive line, and they were down to the third string left tackle, and he actually did a nice job. That rookie's got some talent uh, and held up. So... Uh, I just think you have to rush the passer and throw the ball. And do they throw the ball well enough if they don't run it? We'll see. Uh, they, they didn't rush the passer well enough tonight. they got to be better at that. Jamie, what about San Francisco? To me, they look like an in-the-way team to me, and that's a phrase that we've sort of coined here. I mean, you're going to make the playoffs, but you're, you're not going to the Super Bowl. I don't think this loss really affects them much. They play Houston at home next week. They weren't winning the division. I don't think they're missing the playoffs because of this loss. If they beat Houston, they're going to be the six or seven seed. That's what they would be if they had won tonight. They'd probably been locked into that six seed. Uh, does this really mean anything, this game for San Francisco, this loss? And what do you think about them in terms of their playoff prospects? Yeah, no, you're right. I don't think this means anything in terms of their long-term prospects. Uh, but I do think, you know, these teams kind of mirror each other a little bit. You know, they're going to get healthy, I think, at the right time. You know, certainly for... Uh, you know, San Francisco, you hope to get Mosley back in, in the secondary. You're going to get Elijah Mitchell back probably for the game against uh, against Houston, and they get back to their identity a little bit. Uh, it's going to come down to probably what the quarterbacks do for each of these teams, as you know, you guys talked about with Tannehill in the, in the passing game. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo just can't make mistakes. You know, the, he, he locked in on Kittle in, in the, the end zone there, as Pete alluded to with the Janoris Jenkins interception. He overthrew the other one on the interception as well. So if he's not going to make mistakes, and that's kind of what's helped him, uh, you know, if we go back to the prop, what, what did I say? He hadn't thrown an interception in two straight games. And so if he's not turning the ball over, they can run the ball with some success. You have a star at the wide receiver position in Debo Samuel. You have a star at the tight end position. So they have the guys offensively that can make some plays. Uh, they probably are more of an in-the-way team. But I think about any of these teams in the playoffs, and as we're dealing with this, who's healthy? Who has the bodies on the field to get them through? You know, and so the Titans survive without their offensive line intact. San Francisco, are they going to be able to survive as they get in the playoffs? But, I mean, you think about it, Tampa Bay's falling apart. Who knows what Green Bay, with their guys coming back, what they're going to look like. They have the type of team that can make a run. But if Jimmy Garoppolo makes mistakes, you see what can happen. Pete, what's the big takeaway from this week with these two teams? I mean, kind of put a bow on this. And you watch this game. And, again, you said Tennessee will win the game on the field. You're not going to need the points. Take them on the money line. That cashed very nicely. What was the takeaway in the headline from this when now that you saw how it all unfolded? Well, I think for Tennessee, it has to be, look, we can win games when we don't have Derrick Henry, and we can play uh, good football at times if we don't turn it over. Remember, that was the biggest problem for them is they had been turning the ball over, and Tannehill had been turning it over, and they played well today in that area. Uh, and I think from the 49ers' standpoint, it's Jimmy Garoppolo did some really good things. But like Jamie said, you can't turn the ball over in the end zone in that situation. The game is basically over. I know it was early, but 14 nothing. The Titans looked dead, and he turned the ball over and gave them life. You can't do that. But here's the other thing about these two teams. 
they're going to be dangerous in the playoffs because physical style run game travels. They might not win at all, but they're going to scare the daylights out of whoever they play uh, in the first round because both of them are physical and tough and can run the football. Yeah, everybody seems to love the Colts and sort of overlook the Titans. When Derrick Henry comes back, tell me why you love the Colts and hate the Titans. You can love both. You can love neither. But there's a lot of similarities and not just that they play in the same division. Jamie Eisenberg, look it forward for us. You were absolutely on fire tonight with the DFS and uh, with your prop, that interception. You always We've been hitting that all, all, all month long. What's the start of the week? And if you can think off the top of your head, you know people are asking, if something happens and I lose somebody between now and Sunday, COVID or whatever, who is like a desperation play that you could live with, a.k.a. could fall into the end zone? Well, the start of the week is Ronald Jones. Uh, love the setup for him because of the injury to Leonard Fournette. We saw last year four games Fournette was out. Uh, Ronald Jones, 19 or more total touches in those games, 84 total yards in those games, and three touchdowns in those four games. And it's a Carolina defense that has been susceptible against the run all season long when teams have run at them. They've given up uh, 13 or more PPR points to three straight running backs. So I love the setup for him. As you see, top six running back might be in the top five before the weekend is out, depending on who's healthy. Uh, there are a couple of things. You know, you, have, you lose Taysom Hill. You have Tom Brady banged up you have, or, or with his receiving core banged up. You have Patrick Mahomes down a couple guys. So if you are looking for a quarterback, Tyler Huntley might be the starter for the Ravens. We just saw 39 fantasy points against the Packers. Huge game in the AFC North. So he could be a plug and play at the quarterback position. And then as we're dealing with the COVID situation right now with Tyree Kill, Miko Hardman is somebody that you should be looking at because as we know, Patrick Mahomes isn't going to sit there and say, I'm not throwing the ball because I don't have Hill and I don't have Kelsey. Five times since 2019, Miko Hardman has stepped in for Tyree Kill, 11 or more PPR points in three of those games. So good opportunity for him to hopefully step up and play well once again. Pete, I know you love, and I mean you absolutely live and die off the start of the week from Jamie. So I'd love your thoughts on Ronald Jones as the start of the week. Well, I don't want to do anything to damper it because he needs one. He hasn't had a win since October, so I know he needs a win. Uh, we've only got two more weeks left. Uh, actually, I like Ronald Jones this week. I just think I'm concerned about that offense. I want to see how they play, how the, how the Panthers play them when they don't have those outside receivers. And, uh, but I do like Ronald Jones. I think, it, I think he'll boom this week. I don't think he's – he hasn't boomed in a while. I think Jamie's going to boom this week. As annoying as hell as that is, he's going to get one on us this week. Yeah, well, I mean, look, I've been following this all year long, and he's been really lighting it up for me. You couldn't have hexed him? I'm playing against Ronald Jones this week. I literally did that so that you would malachi him, and I get nothing out of you. Well, no, EK, this is what he does. He's like he, – this every week. No, no, I like that guy. And then as the game unfolds, he just digs at me and digs at me, digs at me. And the best one was, and you want to talk about not booming. So Taysom Hill, two weeks ago, was the start of the week. And obviously it was a struggle the entire game against the Jets. And then he has the Taysom Hill magic. He goes for the long run at the end of the game. And I must have screamed in Pete's face as loud as I've ever said anything before. And he, tur you know, he prides himself on being a very uh, tan individual. And certainly when the offseason comes, eventually for Pete that'll come. And so he'll go back to the beach and get the color back in his face. But do you think he's white now? He was as pasty as I've ever seen him when I screamed at him because he was so afraid after he, watching his favorite yelling, quarterback, by the way. He, the all, he was yelling louder than Alvin Kamara, get down, get down, and he would have been all set. Well no, done. You know what I was yelling, EK? What? Garbage time. It was garbage time. It was a garbage time run. It should have counted. Hey, all I know is my fantasy scoreboard does not differentiate. That's all. I mean, it just That's doesn't. Right. The points are the points are the points. Excellent job. Well done. Jamie on his prop. Ching. Pete telling you Tennessee would win the game outright. Bang. That's why you watch us. You also, you know, make sure you tune in for fantasy football today. One of the great CBS sports podcasts you download, you follow, you enjoy.